A new intraocular lens from Johnson & Johnson, Technis Pursi, a new model released in 2024, intended for both cataract treatment and refractive lens exchange, and of course, for astigmatism correction if needed. So what's new in this model? How is it different from previous one? What to pay attention to? Who it's for? And more. A full review. Hi there! My name is Alexi at IOL Advisor Channel, telling the truth about IOLs. Although every new model is supposedly better than the previous one, there is still no perfect intraocular lens in the world today. Every IOL is a compromise between visual quality, visual range, and certain optical side effects that you can either accept or reject by saying, this isn't right for me. That's why I make videos like this, to clearly explain how each lens really works, what's just marketing, and how to choose the one that fits you best, so you don't end up paying extra for things you don't need, or even worse, saving money now, but then regretting for years that you didn't choose a lens that could have given you better vision. So first let's figure out what type of lens Technis Pure C is. As you may know, there are four basic types of lenses. You'll find a link in this corner and in the video description to a playlist, and another video where I explain the different types of lenses. To save time in this review, I'll say briefly that this lens belongs to the Presbyopia Correcting Group, meaning it's designed to help reduce the need for glasses after surgery. And importantly, if the patient has astigmatism, there is a toric version of Piercy available to correct it and achieve maximum visual quality. So this is a presbyopia correcting lens, and as you may remember, among these lenses there are two main subtypes, extended range of vision lenses and full range of vision lenses. Piercy belongs to the extended range of vision category, based on EDOF, Extended Depth of Focus Technology, and if you want to understand the difference between EDOF and other lenses, I made a video about that too, mentioned earlier, so we won't go into it now. The key point is, lenses of this type are designed for patients who want the best night vision quality, without unwanted side effects, and who are okay with the fact that their near vision won't be perfect, and in some cases, small readers might be needed. And we'll talk in detail about that. The quality of night vision, near vision, and so on. By the way, if this is your first time on my channel, please subscribe right now, turn on notifications for new videos, and give this video a like to support me. So how will this review be structured? We'll start with the official data from the manufacturer, some published materials, and also my experience talking to surgeons, both Ukrainian and European, who have collectively implanted thousands of these lenses to date. So this review will be based on official information, some publications, and the real-world experience I gathered from doctors about implantation and the outcomes their patients had. Alright, let's continue. Starting with the official part, what does the manufacturer say? Let's begin with the basics. The material is hydrophobic acrylic, well known in the market for over 20 years. I've already made several videos about it on my channel, so we won't get into that. It's not very interesting. What's more interesting? Probably the main highlight of this lens is the optical design. If we compare it to its predecessor, the Technis Symphony. The Symphony was built on diffractive technology. That is, if you looked at it, you'd see rings in the center. That caused some confusion among surgeons, because some of them still believe that if a lens has rings, it must be multifocal. But Technis Symphony was never a multifocal lens, I've covered that in the Symphony review. With Piercy, this question doesn't even arise, because Piercy has no rings, it's a purely refractive lens. If we compare it to other ADOF-based lenses, such as Alcon Vivity, which also belongs to the extended depth of focus category, you can clearly see the central zone in Vivity that creates the extended focus. But in Technis Pure C, there's nothing visible like that. And this may be one of the reasons, jumping ahead a bit, why it gives such excellent night vision with minimal halos, especially when calculated correctly, and I'll talk about that later as well. Okay, we've discussed the design. What's next? Probably a stigmatism correction. Yes, Pure C comes in a toric version. Interestingly, this is already the second generation of the toric platform from Technis, the so-called toric 2, which is more stable than the previous toric 1. What does this mean? For astigmatism correction, stability is key. Pure C uses a special haptic design that reduces the risk of rotation, which makes it more stable. Let's move on. Visual quantity and quality. As you may recall from my earlier reviews, I always say that every lens has a visual quantity, meaning visual acuity at different distances, or the defocus curve. If visual quantity, defocus curve, 
and such terms are new to you. Don't worry, I have other videos on the channel that explain what these are and how they work. I'll try to touch on them here simply and briefly. Let's start with the defocus curve or the visual range of Technis Pursi. What visual acuity does it provide at different distances and what can you expect after surgery? Just a reminder, visual acuity is usually measured on the Snellen scale where 2020 means normal visual acuity, let's say 100%, and it could be lower than normal like 2025, 2040, and so on. By the way, if you're wondering whether visual acuity and vision plus minus are different, I have a separate video on that too. The link is in the description and here as well. But that's not important right now. What matters now is, what is visual acuity? Just a reminder, normal visual acuity, which is considered good, is 2020 or 10 lines. It can be higher than 2020, like 2016 or 11 to 12 lines and so on. It can also be lower. Anything below 10 lines is considered below normal vision. For example, 2025 or 2040. According to World Health Organization standards, normal vision is considered to range from 2020 to 2040. Within that, 2020 to 2025 is typically seen as the optimal range. So let's take 2025 as the lower boundary of the optimal zone. Below that, we enter the range of decreased visual acuity. Vision at 2040 or 50% is considered the lower boundary of functional vision. Let's remember these three numbers. 2020 or 100%, 2025 or 80%, and 2040 as 50% of vision. Now let's look at the official defocus curve from the manufacturer's website. The defocus curve of Pursi is more or less similar to that of the Symphony, and one of my subscribers in a previous video, thank you for this, pointed out that the official Johnson & Johnson website only shows the curve up to 50 centimeters, or minus 2 diopters. I found a publication where the defocus curve was measured down to 40 centimeters, and that defocus curve I want to show you, to compare it more accurately with Symphony or other similar lenses. Looking at the defocus curve, you'll notice that Symphony dropped below 2040 visual acuity at around 45 centimeters. According to this study, Pure C reaches that same level at 43 centimeters. This means Pure C performs slightly better at near than Symphony. Of course, real world results vary across patients, but what I've heard from both Ukrainian and European doctors is quite surprising. They say, all of my patients are reading. They weren't expecting it, but their patients are reading. Of course, near vision isn't as sharp as with Synergy or Odyssey, but still pretty good. So this is not a replacement for Synergy Odyssey or even Panoptics, which provide better near vision. But in terms of functional near vision, Pure C performs at least as well as Symphony. And frankly, the feedback suggests it's better. You might say 43 versus 45 centimeters is nothing. And yes, on paper, it might seem minor. But all of this affects subjective comfort, how small letters are perceived, and eye strain. Now let's discuss distance vision and how to improve near vision. Here is where it gets interesting. If you remember, lenses are supposed to be calculated for plano, meaning the final refraction should be zero, or plano. This means the patient won't need glasses for distance vision. But there are methods where the lens is calculated with a mild myopic shift, like minus one or minus half or even quarter of diopter. Why is this done? Remember, the defocus curve for extended depth of focus lenses, EDOF, looks roughly like this. If the zero point sits here, then you'll have quality near vision at this point. If we shift the lens to minus half a diopter, distance vision gets slightly worse, but near vision improves. This method is often used for what's called monovision. I made a video on this too. It's used when you want to improve near vision with enhanced monofocal lenses like Ahens, and of course, it's been used with Symphony and it should also be used with Pure C. But here are two key points that set Pure C apart from Symphony, And they're quite impressive. When we apply a mild myopic shift to improve near vision, what happens? First, distance vision drops a bit. We're shifting the defocus curve, so distance clarity is reduced. Second, any myopic shift tends to increase halo effects. Reminder, halos are light artifacts around point light sources, most often seen at night, oncoming headlights, brake lights, street lamps, and so on. They're a common issue with trifocal full range lenses, and it's one of the main things we're trying to solve. As I explained in the video about trends, we currently have two development paths for IOLs. Some prioritize range of vision, great for people who need to read or see fine details without glasses. 
but they often come with more eye discomfort. Others aim to reduce halos, offering excellent night vision, but sacrifice some near performance. That's the trade-off. So, with standard EDOF lenses, if you shift them slightly toward myopia to improve near vision, distance worsens and halos increase. But pure C? If you shift it slightly toward myopia, take a look here, I'll try to zoom in for you. Its defocus curve handles the shift better. What does this mean practically? With pure C, distance vision after a mild myopic shift degrades less than it does with Symphony. Symphony had a higher reserve of distance acuity, allowing for such a shift, but its defocus curve was steeper, making it more sensitive. Pure C is less sensitive to this shift. It maintains good distance vision while boosting near vision. Even more interesting, when this myopic shift is applied, halos don't worsen. Here's a study showing simulated halo effects at different defocus levels. As you can see, compared to a multifocal lens, Symphony and even Ahance, Pure C performs really well. It doesn't increase halo effects within the typical minus half diopter range used for boosting near vision. That's a major advantage of Pure C, and honestly, it's one of the things I like most about it. So for presbyopia correcting lenses, the choice is getting simpler. In the past it was like less halo, some halo, or a bit less. Now the choice is practically no halo, or some halo, but better near vision. It's up to you. Okay, we've covered visual quantity. Now let's talk about visual quality, specifically contrast sensitivity and the MTF of this lens, since these are key for low light conditions. So what can I say about Pure C in this context? As I expected, because Johnson & Johnson changed the lens design, removed the diffractive rings, and made it fully refractive, but importantly, without adding spherical aberrations, this improved image quality. They modified the design, and the MTF, modulation transfer function, dropped from around 0.4 with Symphony to about 0.3 with Pure C. At first I was a little disappointed, because Symphony had been my favorite. It delivered 0.4 even with wide pupils. Pure C shows 0.3, which looks like a significant drop. But then I started thinking deeper and realized Johnson and Johnson actually did something smart. By changing the design, they basically removed the halo problem entirely, improved tolerance to refractive errors, and made near vision better. And what's about MTF? An MTF of 0.3 to 0.4 matches the natural lens of a young, healthy 20-year-old. That's our reference point. By age 50, the natural lens drops to around 0.1 to 0.2 under the same conditions. Wide pupil, 50 lines per millimeter. This is one reason why people with presbyopia start to feel more eye fatigue and need more light. It's not just reduced accommodation. It's also worse optical performance of the aging natural lens. That's why, in several publications and discussions, I've seen the idea that for people with early presbyopia, Offering lens replacement with something like Pure C could be a real option. Because first, the lens gives you MTF twice as good as your aging natural lens. Second, it solves the issue of presbyopia. Third, it eliminates the risk of cataracts down the road, say in 10 years. And surgery is easier when done earlier. Operating on elderly patients with advanced cataracts is doable. But clearly, earlier is better. Okay, back to MTF. Pure C has an MTF around 0.3, maybe slightly higher. And that's better than some monofocal lenses under poor lighting. It's on par with Synergy, and significantly better than other EDOF lenses. So in this aspect, Pure C continues the symphony tradition of high quality night vision. But here's the real question. How does it feel in real life? Because MTF is an optical number, and real life is contrast sensitivity. If we compare Pure C's contrast sensitivity with IHANS, both lenses are in the same conditions. At 12 cycles per degree, contrast sensitivity doesn't fall below one log unit. That's fully normal for everyday activities, reading, functioning, and so on. Okay, we've gone through clinical studies and publications. Now let's return to the real world experience of doctors. What are Ukrainians and Europeans saying? How do their patients see with pure C, specifically about contrast sensitivity? I asked this question to doctors, and even when I didn't ask, they said, the contrast sensitivity is top-notch. Now, a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel. Around half of you watching haven't done that yet, and I always mention it. Please, if you haven't, do it now. And if you have, thank you. A like, thumbs up, or comment really helps me out. So, 
What else needs to be said? We should talk about how this lens is recommended to be calculated. That's a common question I get, in personal consultations, from doctors, and from patients. And it came up in a very interesting roundtable discussion of about 10 experts, which being held at ESCRS conference in Barcelona. They discussed different types of IOLs, whether we should be implanting more EDOF, increased range of vision lenses, or full range multifocal ones. One opinion stood out. With pure C, it's worth calculating the lens for the dominant eye with a small minus. If the calculator suggests multiple powers, choose the first minus, not plano. Then, for the non-dominant eye, if the patient is happy with the result, you can do the same, but ideally go for the second minus. This gives the best visual quality and a broader range of focus than with other calculation strategies. Of course, the doctor will decide this in each specific case, but I want to share this recommendation with both doctors watching and with you, so that you know what to discuss with your doctor if you want a bit more visual range with this lens. Okay, we've covered visual quantity, visual quality. Two topics left. First, the optical system. Does it have any light filters? And second, who is this lens suitable for? So about the filter, this lens has a violet light filter, the same one as in Synergy. You can learn more about it in my Synergy review if you're curious. But in general, compared to Synergy, Pure C still gives better night vision because Synergy loses about 6% of light on the diffractive grid and extra focus. Pure C doesn't. Pure C uses 100% of the incoming light, and with the same MTF optical quality as Synergy, it still gives higher contrast sensitivity than Synergy. All right, friends, the video is getting long, but let's talk about the last point. Who is this lens for? I believe this lens is ideal for patients who care most about high quality night vision while still staying independent of glasses. Second, like Symphony, it can be used in eyes with non-perfect retinas within reason because it maintains high MTF values and contrast sensitivity. So in my view, it's suitable for patients who want to be glasses free and whose eyes are not perfectly healthy. And there are many such patients, including people after laser vision correction, people with glaucoma, diabetes, etc. If you don't have any limitations, the best way to choose between Pure C and Synergy or Odyssey or let's say between extended range and full range lenses, is to ask yourself, how do I want to see? What's more important for me, more light or more near vision? What's my lifestyle like? You can talk through these things with me in a personal consultation or go to my website, iol-advisor.com. The link is in the description. There you can find the tools that can help you. By the way, I forgot to mention, while talking with European doctors, one in Spain and one in Italy, told me they implanted this lens in their own parents. The Spanish doctor did it for his mother, the Italian doctor for his father-in-law, and in both cases they were happy. I asked, so how are the results? And they said, well what can I say? The lens is good. I'd get it for myself. Everything's great. They're enjoying life. So, friends, think about how you want to see. Talk to your ophthalmologist. Improve your visual quality and see you in the next videos. All the best.